Hey, good morning, CC3 Math 8 students. All right, today, your Khan Academy. If you remember right, Khan yesterday was not very difficult. This one's not that difficult either. You do just have to read the word problem um, and make a determination. So, um, in this word problem, right up here, this is where I'm reading from. Nate wants to predict how long people will use the internet each day based on their age. So, here the key thing is based on their age. This tells you what the x-intercept is, is their age is the x-intercept. Um, sometimes it'll say based on their age or as a function of their age or um, use different words like that. So based on their age, age is the x-intercept. So this top line in this case is the x-intercept. Now, the top line is typically, excuse me for that music, the top line is typically your x-axis and the bottom line is typically your y-axis. But that's not always the case, and I'm actually gonna show you an example of that as well. But typically your top line will be your x-axis. So, because it's based on their age, we want the x-axis. So when we look at these four graphs over here, take a look at these four graphs, and which, there's two of them that have your x-axis as age. Can you look at those and tell me which one you think it is? Hopefully, you said, these two have your age as your x-axis. So the nice part about it, we know letter C has the internet as the x, and this one has the internet as the x. So we know these two right here are not correct. So I'm just going to x those out. Then it says down here, um, which one is the displays the data? So which one displays the data the best? Okay. Does this one look more easy to read? Or does this one look more easy to read? I think we'd all agree that A does. B is just, it's too clustered. So letter A in this case would be the best description. That's basically all you're doing. Let's do one more here just to make sure we've, we've got this down pat. Carly owns an ice cream stand. Now this makes sense. She wants to predict how many ice cream cones she will sell based as a function of how of the average daily high temperature. That makes sense. Gee, the warmer it gets, the more ice cream I sell. The colder it gets, I'm not going to sell a lot of ice cream. So in this case, even though uh, or the daily average temperature is going to be our x-axis, even though, if you notice here, she put this in the opposite order. She actually has her y-axis on top, her x-axis on the bottom. And that's where I say to you, you just got to watch that kind of closely. So we are looking for the graphs that have your average daily high as your x-axis. So, when we go down here and look at the four graphs, average daily high for these two are the x-axis, and these two say the cones are the x-axis. So, we know they're not those two because we want the average daily high. Then the second part is says which one displays the data the best up here. So, which graph is easier to read? Is letter C kind of easier to read or is letter D I would argue letter D is really clustered and it's kind of hard to read. I mean, it's hard to know in those cases how many cones you sold. So I would say the better one in this case is C. And generally speaking, the more spread out a graph is like that, the easier it is to read. So it's kind of, that part's kind of easy. This one versus that one, you know, this is a bad one because it's too clustered. So that's what you're doing today. This one, again, should not take you too long. You should be able to get through this one. Um, hope you guys have a great day, and we will see you again in the future. Bye-bye.